This is the inside story of a £6 billion gamble. The building of the biggest passenger plane the world has ever seen. This aircraft cannot be a failure. We've already spent billions of dollars on this project. And we do have a few billions to spend, yes. <laughs> it's a tale of top secret research and development, of confidential business deals, but above all, of intense personal pressure. This is precision engineering on a mammoth scale. A race against time to construct the largest airliner in history. The Airbus A380. hope is the future of aviation about to be assembled for the very first time three giant pieces of fuselage will soon become the body of a truly vast flying machine over three times as long as a blue whale five times as heavy the A380 marks a new era in airliners a 555 seat double-decker super jumbo able to fly non-stop a third of the way around the globe this project is an enormous challenge will the parts fit together will it be built on time just getting this far has taken courage and amazing ingenuity over 10 years in the making the dream is of a new kind of plane built in an extraordinary way. All over the world, massive new factories are building parts for the new machine. It's made using state-of-the-art methods and high-tech materials. But that's just the start. Transporting the giant parts to southwestern France has been an incredible feat in itself. Traveling by river, sea, land and air, components have covered thousands of miles, ducking low bridges, squeezing through tiny French villages in the middle of the night. But the next phase is the toughest yet. The aircraft must be assembled to the tightest of tolerances. The engines, the landing gear, cockpit, the computers must all be tested. With the parts finally gathered together, Airbus is about to find out if their grand vision will work. The stakes couldn't be higher. When you invest 10.7 billion dollars on building what we're pronouncing to be the flagship of the 21st century, it can't fail. There isn't, well we almost got there, or it's so-so, not too shabby. No, either it's going to be that flagship of the 21st century, or it's going to be a disaster. Here in Toulouse, southwestern France, the company will find out if their huge gamble pays off. In a factory big enough to hold 16 football pitches, they have just 11 months to build the first flying prototype. The clock is ticking. The first task is to join seven major components into one vast aircraft, a process that should take just over five weeks. This is a critical phase. The parts must be assembled perfectly if the plane is to fly as efficiently as Airbus expects. A mistake here would mean the prototype is flawed, which would delay the entire program. We need to be very, very accurate. We have to be sure that the general sh the shape of the aircraft is in line with the specification, that the, that the geometry of the aircraft is good, and to avoid twist fuselage or twist wings. The performance of the aircraft depends on this shape. Gilles Cormier is in charge of the main structural assembly of the A380. Building any airliner requires precision. 
but ensuring that the three enormous body sections of this 240 foot long giant are brought together in a perfectly straight line presents his team with an exceptional challenge. I'm, I'm, I feel very confident now, even if it's difficult, because we have, we have put in place a very accurate systems. The key to success lies in the use of lasers. As invisible beams scan the sections of fuselage, they are reflected by mirrors mounted on the approaching components. From this reflected light, a computer can work out the exact relative positions of the parts, ensuring perfect alignment. Once positioned, the fuselage shells are brought together very, very slowly. Pascal Belloc de Zeus uses a remote control panel to maneuver the sections. Each turn on the dial brings the massive parts a tenth of an inch closer together, moved by huge mobile pillars supporting the shells. On the left, a part made in Germany. On the right, one made in France. This is the last stage of a 1200 mile journey. Well, the trick, the, the trick is to be organized and then uh, it should go okay. Um, we're in good shape, I think, to start the joining of the uh, fuselage now. The clearance is so tight that metal shoehorns are needed to ease one shell over the other. Speed it up. This is the biggest airliner ever coming together at last. Just as planned, the sections fit together perfectly. The overlap is just six inches wide and 10,000 rivets will soon hold the French and German built parts together forever. For some, the sleepless nights are over. But even as engineers celebrate an important milestone, the pressure mounts on the sales team. Airbus has to convince the world's airlines that they really do want a plane with 45% more volume than a Boeing 747. For John Leahy, the pressure is mounting. 250 sales are needed for the project to break even. So far, he's got 139 firm orders. Today, the bosses of Australian airline Qantas are coming to check on their 1.8 billion pound investment. We're going to go out and greet them? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's whisk this. Is that time? Is that time? Is that time? Are they going to get about a 10 minute warning or something on the bus? It has to go smoothly. But this is one of our best customers, one of our bigger customers now for the 380 program, and we want to make sure that they're happy, that they get the answers from us that they want, and they go away with a good impression. You can imagine what would happen if they came here and said, oh my heavens, the A380 isn't what we thought it would be. In front of their entire board, that could be devastating. After a presentation, the group will visit a showroom mock-up at the aircraft interior. It's only then that John Leahy will find out if the Australians like what they see. At stake is not only billions of pounds, but the pride and perhaps the future of the company as well. It's going to be a long day.